Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We are continuing uh, the reading of Akida Tawheed, the Creed of Monotheism by Dr. Salah Fawzan. And it has been quite unique because we've been able to learn more about our faith and really have more knowledge due to it with all the stuff he has in here for us. Now, we are going to continue in chapter 2. Okay, and we're getting into names and attributes of Allah. And it has a lot of context here for us. Okay, so just to remind you, it was refutation of those who deny the names and attributes of Allah or deny any part thereof. Okay, so that's the theme. Let's begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. One who does not possess perfect attributes is not fit to be the God of the universe. This is why Ibrahim said to his father, quote, Why do you worship that which hears not, sees not? Quran 1942. A lot of people really do uh, have this sort of idolatry that happens to them. And it's quite bizarre. There are some faiths that think that there are cows who have gods inside of them. And that their poo is spiritual. You should go ahead and type that into Google. And you'll see videos that hasn't been suppressed. Where a woman is talking saying that there are gods inside of a cow. So, believe you me, there are people who really think the most weird stuff. Also he, the Most High, said, while refuting those who worship the calf, quote, did they not see that it could neither speak to them nor guide them to the way? Quran 7, 148. When people bring animals, or their idols have animal stuff in it, even though symbolically the animal can represent something, I always found that to be super creepy and degrading because the animal is not like the human. Even if it's, even if the symbolism denotes a trait or attribute, it's bizarre. The affirmation of attributes is a sign of perfection, while its negation is a defect. One who possesses no attributes is either non-existent or defective, and Allah is free of such. There is no evidence for the interpretation of these attributes away from their apparent meanings. So here, this is the difficult part for me. Apparent meanings, but there's wisdom that's extracted from the sentence. Sometimes you can take the beauty out of stuff when you just take it very literal. So such interpretations are invalid. Also resigning the meaning of there thereof to Allah necessitates that Allah addressed us in the Quran with that which we understood, not its meaning, despite his ordering us to invoke him by his names. How can we invoke him? With what we understand not. He also commanded us to ponder over all his verses. So how do we ponder over what cannot be understood? It becomes clear from this that the names and attributes of Allah must be affirmed in a way that befits Allah, negating any similarity in its real essence with those of creatures. As Allah the Most High said, quote, there is nothing like unto him, and he is the all hear, all seer. Quran 42.11. So some people They'll talk about other pagan religions and say, well, people created animal-like uh, creatures because they had to separate that level of, hey, this doesn't look like you, so you have to uh, try to connect with it. Whereas others made God or the gods look like humans. And then people would think, oh, 
you know, we are gods, and the gods look like us, and then they put themselves on the same level as God, right? So, people who create hawk-headed gods and stuff like that, they'll be like, well, we had to change it up and make the paganistic gods in trees and animals and, and cow poo and mushrooms and all this stuff all different because we had to separate it from man so that man did not think that he was God or could become God that the gods were different right so they have all these strange ways in which they do that and little like if you read folklore and myths and all those strangeness you see this attempt to separate humans from their gods and other attempts to make humans like gods or on the same level as their gods and give the gods uh, human-like attributes such as you know Zeus r-wording and being a, a playboy right very unethical Mars the god of war for the Greeks and Romans the Macedonians right today we can sit back and be like, look at the wisdom of Islam. There's nothing like unto him. He's the all-hear, the all-seer. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't a guy in a cloud. It's not something our minds can conceptualize and we don't make an idol. We don't make a painting. Unfortunately, Catholics hired painters to paint God as a bearded guy reducing God down reducing him to the human form and putting human bodies as fragile as they are on a pedestal right putting the human mind is a great thing that Allah gave us but they put it on the same level as God how by contending that a God bleeds God cries a God uh, has these human emotions and operates within a human body in the human realm you know it's fascinating when you examine how some say Jesus is God why would God allow himself to be humiliated and nailed to a cross why would a God bleed Okay, even in the Greek myths, the, why why would the, why would the crying and stuff like that? The, the, even the Greek gods, they were stronger than the humans, but Jesus is according to them God, but the Jews, his own so God's own creation was able to, to chain him in a way, to overpower him. You in in the Greek myths you couldn't chain Zeus. First Muslims you can't chain Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now Zeus and the Titans in them some of them the tit he helped to overrun those Titans and they got locked up and and put into like this a uh, prison and in the eternal void. Whatever, but that's bizarreness. Now the story of Gilgamesh. His dad made a mistake and chopped his head off and he got an elephant head. So their gods make mistakes. And they can't just form a new head. They gotta get an animal head. What? Insufficiencies, insufficiencies, insufficiencies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be touched by human hands and nailed to a cross and made to cry and bleed. No. No. No one can chop the head off of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and replace it with an elephant's head. No. No. So, our wisdom is Allah's one. There's not one in the tree. You look at the druids. You know, there's not the stars. So you're not looking at the stars and talking to a soothsayer, sorcerer, uh, magician, whatever, and being like, yeah, if you... Numerology and what the other other one, I forget the oh, I just slipped my mind the other one. There was numerology and something else, and the cultists or whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, number, 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 the stars, this, this, and that. Okay, this is your destiny. This is what's gonna happen to you. No. 
the mathematics is not how you would conceptualize God. God is not a computer. Okay? We are so different in Islam when you start to study the nonsense that's out there and you're like, Nah, I can't worship something that bleeds and allows... Like, okay, a human will create a robot. The robot can rebel and kill you. Where's that movie? There's tons of, like, robot movies. Chappie, Dus Machina, uh, you know, tons of robot movies. Terminator, right? Humans create something with their own hands, comes back to bite them. Okay? We can never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we do, we harm our own selves. That shows you who's really in power. Okay? For Mary, like the way they talk about Mary, peace be upon her, like that her, her, that God had to go inside her womb in order to enter into this realm. No. Allah simply has to do like what he did with Adam. Be and it is. He doesn't need the female womb. God was never a baby. Okay? Who's... No. No. God was not a baby. God did not poop in diapers. Okay? God didn't need to breastfeed. No. No, I'm sorry. You know? And... and in the Christian theme, Mary was married to, to, to somebody. Okay? Okay? For her to get pregnant while she's married and that not be the father, no. Just be and it is. Be and it is. Like with Adam and Eve. Makes more logical sense. So, Jesus, people saying Jesus being God, you have reduced God down to the human form. No. Humans are a great creation. But we cannot put ourselves on that. That's why so many people got ego. So people are so strange. Because they think that they are God. But they can... They, they take free will to a, to a realm. Where they think they can manifest their own destiny. And command and control evil. And they have no reverence in their heart. They have no humbleness. They don't seek redemption or forgiveness or atonement. Because it's hard for them. Because they have compared God to them and them to God. Okay. No, we don't do that. So when we look at this name and attributes that he's discussing. And Quran 42.11. It's very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not limited. Not limited. Very important. So he negated from himself any similarity to other things while affirming the attributes of hearing and sight for himself. This indicates that the affirmation of attributes of Allah does not necessitate similarity with his creatures. Now what's, what's interesting here, the way an alligator hears is not going to be the same as a bloodhound or a bunny rabbit. The shape of the ear the environment it's tuned towards, the eyesight of the great white shark is going to vary from that of a bald eagle. They are eyes at sea, but unique to that creature. The function of sight, but the way in which the sight has its own expressions is different. So for us, when we say, well, well hearing and sight is... A human, therefore, God is human. No. No. The way the fish sees, different than the way the beetle sees. Their spectrum. Right? Very important. It also indicates that it is mandatory to affirm these attributes along with negation of likeness. This is the meaning of the statement of Aho Asuna Wal Jama'ah. Regarding the affirmation of his names and attributes. Affirmation without comparison and absolution from defect without denial. Now that's a difficult one to remember. Right? So if you're part of Ahusunah wal Jama'ah, when it comes to the affirmation of the name and attributes, you affirm without comparison 
and you have absolution from the defect without denial. Defect without denial. Now the comparison point, if you're trying to explain to a kid, like, how does God see what we do? There's an example where you could say, well, for example, the way I would try to word it the best way is like, okay, you're in the water, who sees you best in that realm? You're in the air, who sees you best in that realm? Everyone, even other people, you got to, 10 people will see you in a different way. Which one is the real you? And when you look in the mirror, depending on the style of mirror, you will see yourself in a different way. So which expression of you is the real you? The way the ant sees you? The way you see yourself? The way the mirror reflects? The way your parents see you? What is it? Who's the real you? Right? Is it the body? Or is this, or is it this like web of outer and inner mixing? And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us anew, the real you is exposed. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see that. Nothing is comparable to Allah. So what Allah perceives is different than all of that. So perception varies on earth, how others see you. So it follows that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see you is going to be in a way that no one else can see. Right? So all seeing is going to see you in all those different capacities. As well as the inner and outer. No one can see your inner. They can glimpse it through your body language, the way in which your tongue reveals things, as in speech, and your actions, what your hands do, where your feet take you. Right? Where you actually allow yourself to be. Because actions speak louder than words, and actions reveal who you are, regardless of the empty platitudes and cliches that you spout. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having hearing and seeing, those are for him and nothing can compare to that level. That's its own category. I have to remember that. And that's why when people think they can escape judgment, it's, it's laughable. You're not going to escape, my guy. There is no way you can escape. You're in that water. Someone's, some fish is hearing the ding, 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 ding. You bled a little bit, you're in the water, some fish is going to, you know, smell that and taste it, come for you. Alright? You are walking in the woods thinking you're super quiet, but a rabbit been heard you. That deer you wanted, it scattered away. It heard you. You can try your best to avoid being heard and seen, but there's always someone there. You're walking in the night, you know, you got your cloak on, you're like, yeah, human may not see you, but the owl is there watching you and the owl flies silently and you won't see the owl think about if that owl wanted it's in the tree it just come to you and take out your eyes you wouldn't even see it coming the owl has eyes that function in a different way than yours the companion of you in the night when you think you're alone And things can still harm you even if they can't hear you. Parasites, tapeworms, they're wiggling around. I don't hear you, you know. And they get inside you, cause you problems. Think about that. A jaguar could not hear you, but can see you and can smell you. Still going to get you. Really fascinating. Really fascinating. We're in the next chapter, chapter 3 explanation of polytheism and deviations in human life and glimpses of the history of disbelief, heresy, polytheism, and hypocrisy. And there's section 1 through 5. Okay. Now, first section, deviations in human life. Second, shirk, polytheism, definitions and types. Kufur, disbelief, definition and types. And nifak, uh, hypocrisy, Definitions and types, and then the last one explanation of the meaning of each of the following Yahiliya, ignorance, fisk, sinfulness, dalal, misguidance, and rida, apostasy. Their classes and rulings. Hitting the nails on the head, pack full of knowledge. Section 1 Deviations in Human Life. Bismillah. 
Allah created all of the creation for his worship and he prepared for them provisions that will aid them thereupon. Now, prepare provisions. I'm really getting into this, this seafood thing. How I've been watching just in Vietnam, all the things they eat and that come from the water. Giant sneeze cells, these huge clams. You're like, what? Squids, octopuses. I saw them take a shark and eat it. You know, and you're like, the, if we keep the waters clean and don't overfish, Allah has provided the ocean. Okay, we got lobster, got crab, crawfish, frogs, you name it. Whatever is halal. Something on there isn't halal, forgive me. But there's so much food. Starvation is enabled. You look at how many seeds are on a strawberry. How many seeds are in a kiwi? How many seeds are in a freaking pineapple? Right? Even the banana got seeds. There are seeds in everything. And so much land. We can definitely create more sustainable life for people if people wanted to. If every house grew an apple tree, or everyone had a fruit tree, and we planted wild fruit trees, think about how many more people would be fed. But those who make the rulings in the city, where trees will be planted, what you can grow, the rules that you have to have a lawn and you can't have a vegetable garden, this enables starvation. Okay. Zoning laws, all of that. It enables it. Allah has given us plenty of provision on this earth. It's just humans who lack the tenacity and the desire to create it. Think about it. Really think about it. It's us in this modern era who've forgotten about having your own personal farm and living in a place where you have space in a yard. In apartment buildings, you can't grow food like that. But you could create vertical gardens. There's so much you could do. But the people who are the architects, who decide what beauty is and what you can do, they don't want you to have it. They limit how many pots of flowers you can have. Rules upon rules upon rules that are a nanny state type of governance. Now there's a, a yah here for us. He, the Most High, said, quote, And I, Allah, created not the jinns and mankind, except they should worship me alone. I seek not any provision from them, i.e. provision from themselves or for my creatures, nor do I ask that they should feed me, i.e. feed themselves or my creatures. Verily Allah is all provider, owner of power, the most strong. Quran 51, 56 through 58. The soul, by its nature, if it is left undisturbed, recognizes the sole right of Allah to be worshipped, and loves Allah. It worships Him not associating any partner with Him. However, it, the soul, is polluted and deviated from this by what the devils amongst mankind and the gems embellish in it, with what they inspire to one another of deception. Now, one thing I think that couldn't be part of that, people who get high... And then they, 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 they spout out their uh, wisdom rambling findings, right? And then people see this person who's high on mushrooms or does very bizarre rituals. Uh, and they think, like, that, that, that guy gets it. Like, oh, he must have some secret knowledge, right? But the sober mind who's endured pain and hasn't coped with intoxicants and who has stayed upon worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some will be like, oh, well, that they, they seem so ordinary and bland. But someone who's smoking weed, taking psychedelic mushrooms, doing DMT, uh, is, is chugging a little bit of alcohol, the people will be like, oh, you know, that guy's schizophrenic dreams, they got some wisdom in there because it sounds so creative. No. You gotta watch out for the ramblings. Watch out for the ramblings of those who have gone off the deep end into a schizophrenic realm of delusion. Tawheed is ingrained in the heart, and polytheism is a foreign intruder. Allah the Most High said, So set you, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, 
your face towards the religion of pure Islamic monotheism, Hanifa. Worship none but Allah alone, Allah's fitra, i.e. Allah's Islam, etc. monotheism, with which he has created mankind. No change let there be in the halaq ila, i.e. the religion of Allah, Islamic monotheism. Quran 30, 31. Now, when they quote the Quran, it would be nice if they kept the brackets out because it's so hard to read. I wish it would just be the ayah and then do a couple footnotes to the side. He, peace be upon him, said, Every child is born upon the fitrah, pure monotheism. It is his parents who make it a Jew, Christian, or Magian. And that is reported in Abu Hari and Muslim by Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. If you get, you know, trying to explain the Trinity to a kid, you're like, uh. But if you say Allah is one, it's like, ah. Uh, boom, it's a more direct line. You gotta go through the Kabbalistic charts and rabbinical loopholes. You know, it's not the same. The more I study theology, the more I can clearly see that Islam is my path. Uh, so it is funny when people get mad at me for studying other religions because they think the other religions will corrupt me. Inshallah they won't. But it just makes my faith more stronger because I get to see the, the treetops through the fog. The basis of the progeny of Adam is monotheism and the religion of Islam. Adam, peace be upon him, and those who came after him of his progeny for several centuries were upon Islam. Allah the Most High said, Mankind were one community, and Allah sent prophets with glad tidings and mournings. Quran 2, 213. The first time polytheism and deviation from the correct doctrine occurred was with the people of Nu, Noah. He, peace be upon him, was thus the first messenger of Allah to mankind after the occurrence of polytheism. That's a good thing to remind ourselves. Like, it was must have been so bad that the flood had to have happened, and Nu Noah was the first messenger. Adam lived in the time where there wasn't any shirk. Think about that. Quote, Verily we have inspired you, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, as we inspired Nu Noah and the prophets after him. Quran 4, 163. Ibn Abbas said, Between Adam and Nu, there were ten generations, all were upon Islam. Ibn Qayyim said, This opinion is the correct one, because the recitation of Ubay bin Kab, i.e. of the verse in Al-Baqarah, is, They differed, and Allah sent prophets. Mashallah. This recitation is supported by the statement of Allah in Surah Yunus, Quote, Mankind were but one community, i.e. on one religion, Islamic monotheism. Then they differed later, Quran 10, 19. So again, Adam comes, there's still problems like sin, because, you know, they, they were taken out of paradise and whatnot, they made a mistake. But they weren't like worshipping trees. <laughs> And I think giving mountains holy names and, you know, looking at the volcano as a source of power or, you know, rubbing cow poo on themselves, you know. Or, you know, eating mushrooms and then following reindeer around as they're high. Very different. <laughs> he, peace be upon him, intended to say... Wait, I can't tell if that's the... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala symbol or the prophet symbol. So, ah, I think it's Allah subhanahu wa It's different. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to say the sending of prophets. I don't know it. He's talking about one of the hadith narrators. I don't know that little symbol right there. He intended to say that the sending of prophets was as a result of their differing from what they were previously upon of the true religion. 
Similarly, the Arabs were upon the religion of Ibrahim, may Allah be pleased with him, till Amru bin Luhay al-Khazai came and changed the religion of Ibrahim, establishing idols in the Arab lands, particularly in the Hijaz. And these were worshipped besides Allah. So polytheism spread through the holy city and its neighboring cities till Allah raised the Prophet, peace be upon him, the last of all prophets. He invited people to Tawheed and to following the path of Ibrahim, and he strove in the path of Allah, a true striving till Tawheed in the path of Ibrahim returned. He broke the idols, and Allah perfected him, the religion, and perfected his favor upon all his creatures. So, perfected the favor upon us, perfected the religion, and protected, you know, our ability to seek redemption and be guided to the truth. The noble generations, his companions, those after them, and those after them, followed his path, till ignorance became rampant amongst latter generations, and foreign religious ideas came in. Then polytheism returned to most of the human nations of Islam through channels of the calls of misguidance, and the making of buildings upon graves, in order to take example from the reverence of the pious and the righteous in the graves. So they claimed to love them till they built tombs over their graves and took them as idols, which they worshipped besides Allah, with all manners of servitude, such as invocation, seeking assistance, making sacrifices at their station. They called this form of polytheism tawassul, seeking closeness to Allah, by means of the pious, and a manifestation of love for them, and not polytheism in their opinion. So it appears that some people don't, the discussion of shirk, essentially, worship, having serious, serious discussions on what does it mean to worship so that you don't uh, invoke anyone other than Allah. You need to watch out for that. You don't ask s someone, a human being, who's dead to help you, right? It's just not how it works. They forgot that this was the statement of the earliest polytheists. Who would say, quote, We worship them only that they may bring us near to Allah. Quran 39.3 So no person can bring you near to Allah, right? You gain nearness to Allah through submission. Through following the Sharia. Your path has been set already. You follow that path. You, you know, you do your zakah, you do your dhikr, you obey the rules, you stay upon tawheed. There's all these things you do. That's going to bring you closer. The more you do good in Islam and submit and follow the way, you'll be on the way. If you do innovations and be that and you're like talking to... Like invocation is like talking to people, you know, who can't do anything for you. But then it's just going directly straight. It's an interesting way I started to think about it. Like when you go to a business, where's the manager? You don't go to like the person like talking shows and tell them all the problems of the company that's not their function right they can't help you get near to where you gotta go they got their duties they got their job you gotta go to the leader you have to go to those who have the authority the power if you want a solution and a guide Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our direct way we don't have to go to uh, like think about it pagans of the past Give me your baby, I'll invoke the gods for you, and we'll see what they do for you. <laughs> you want your harvest to come back? Uh, give me this many uh, coins, you know, and this much, and I'll, I'll supplicate for you in the temple. It's like, no. We don't have any middleman, no intercessor. It's, okay, you can advise me. But Allah has given you the Quran, you have the Sunnah, and you have your scholars, Get on. But you have the Quran. It's very clear. Right? Read yourself of shirk. Try to avoid sin. It's very straightforward. Right? It's not a, a endless hiking trail, you know, of how you get there. You can't pay there's you can't pay your way in. Like, oh you know, I'll just do this and I'll take indulgences, like, no. Just not the way it goes. 
only worship Allah. Okay? The acts of worships themselves that are for the sake of Allah will get you near to Allah. You see? Despite this form of polytheism into which most of mankind have fallen, past and present, most of them still believe in Tawheed or Rububiya, unity of worship. They only associate partners to Allah in worship. As Allah Aswajal said, quote, And most of them believe not in Allah except that they attribute partners unto Him, i.e. they are Mushrikun, polytheists. Quran 12, 106. None has ever contested the existence of our Rabb, the Lord, except a small, negligible number of men, such as Fir'aun, Pharaoh, the modern-day freethinkers, and the communists. Their denial is only out of arrogance, as their inner selves affirm it. When some people, like what I liked about him mentioning here, the communists, they're atheistic in nature, party philosophy, right? So, when people are like, the Muslims are communistic, you're like, no, man, just stop it. Just stop it. So the communists are punishing the Muslims because they are creating a parallel form of, you know, culture. They put Allah first, not the supreme leader. Okay. The Sharia... Is not a communistic system. Allah the Most High said, And they belied them those ayat proofs, evidences, verses, signs, etc., wrongfully and arrogantly, though their own selves were convinced thereof, i.e., those ayat are from Allah, and Musa Moses is the messenger of Allah in truth. But they disliked to obey Musa Moses and hated to believe in his message of monotheism. Quran 27.14 Moses called to Tawheed. When they say the, the prophets uh, were Muslims, you have to really examine further. They weren't telling you to invoke the god of the tree, the god of the river, the ghost of the hallway. wasn't happening. Also, their intellects recognize that for every creature there must be a creator and anything in existence must have an originator, that the intricate and precise order of the universe must necessitate the existence of a wise controller, one able and knowledgeable. Whoever denies this has either lost his sense of reasoning or is an arrogant one, who has shut his intellect in and made a fool of himself, so his opinion is of no value. Atheists really think that it's more glorious to, to think our ancestors were some naked looking ape creatures who didn't wipe their bums and were extremely ugly. This is quite horrendous. Genetic mutations, different shapes of heads, jawbones, all that doesn't mean to some people being short because of malnutrition and some people being taller because they got nice good meat and some people being deformed because they inbred that doesn't mean to me that evolution is real there's a big discussion in and of itself big discussion but that's another story for another time what was your favorite part let me know so educational this book I've truly enjoyed it Dr. Salaf is a very smart man may I'll reward him with good I hope to read more and more of his stuff and may I'll reward the people who are translating his stuff that's very important very important if you'd like to join my blog it's www.subscribestar.com slash milhanarchive hope to see you there